Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. If you search for the toughest exam in the world, one of the results you'll find is the JEE Advanced. This is an admission criteria for the Indian Institutes of Technology. Some of the famous IIT alums you may recognize, such as Sundar Pichai, who is the CEO of Alphabet and Google. So what makes the JEE Advanced test so difficult? The format is a three hour test where you have a paper that tests physics, chemistry, and mathematics. This is like taking a Putnam exam, which is three hours. But you then have a two hour break and you have to take another paper for three hours. It's a grueling and challenging exam and you only have an average of three minutes to solve each question. This problem comes from the 2019 exam and it was in the Mathematics Paper 2, Question 11. 161,319 students appeared for the test and only 78 got the correct answer. That's less than 0.05% that correctly solved the question. To give an illustration of just how difficult this question was, imagine that each of these green stars represents a student that got the question correct. Here's what it would look like when you have approximately 160,000 students who didn't get the correct answer. It's a tiny minuscule number of students that got this question correct. So what was this notoriously difficult question? Let the cardinality of X denote the number of elements in a set X. Let S be the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. B a sample space where each element is equally likely to occur. If A and B are independent events associated with S, then the number of ordered pairs A comma B, such that one is less than or equal to the cardinality of B, is less than the cardinality of A equals blank. You are to provide a numeric answer. I thank Gyan for the suggestion. Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. When you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. I've seen many solutions presented online, but the one I found most useful was a solution by Clud G on Math Stack Exchange. So we're going to approach this problem sentence by sentence. Let's start out with the first sentence. Let the cardinality of X denote the number of elements in a set X. This is a pretty straightforward notation. Let's say A is equal to 1, 4, 5. There are three elements in A, so the cardinality of A would be equal to 3. Let's say B was 3 and 6. Then the cardinality of B would be 2 because there are two elements in the set. Now the next sentence. Let S be the set of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Be a sample space where each element is equally likely to occur. So we have six elements in this sample space and each of them are equally likely to occur, so the probability of each will be equal to 1 over 6. So what is this intuitively? This is basically the same sample space as the roll of a standard six-sided dice. So you could think about this problem as finding subsets of a roll of a dice. If A and B are independent events associated with S, so the definition of independent events is that two events are independent if and only if the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So let's imagine A is the set 1, 3, 5, and B is the set 1, 4. So A and B will just be 1. That's the only commonality between these two sets. So the probability of A and B will be 1 over 6. The probability of A will be 3 divided by 6. The probability of B will be 2 divided by 6. Now, if we multiply 3 over 6 by 2 over 6, we do end up with 1 over 6. So these two events, A and B, will be independent. And notice, they don't have to be mutually exclusive to be independent events. As long as this definition is satisfied, they are independent events. Now, let's take a look where A is 2, 3, 4, 5 b is 2, 3, 6. The intersection of a and b will be 2 and 3. 
the probability of A and B is 2 over 6, the probability of A is 4 over 6, and the probability of B is 3 over 6. If we take 4 over 6 multiplied by 3 over 6, we do in fact get 2 over 6. So here A and B are also independent events. Now let's take a look where A is equal to 1, 3, 6, B is equal to 3. So A and B will be equal to 3. The probability of A and B will be 1 over 6. The probability of A is 3 over 6. The probability of B is 1 over 6. The probability of A multiplied by the probability of B will be equal to 1 over 12. And that's not equal to the probability of A and B. So these two events, A and B, are not independent. Now let's go to the next sentence. The number of ordered pairs A comma B such that 1 is less than or equal to the cardinality of B is less than the cardinality of A equals what? Let's start with the inequalities. 1 less than or equal to the cardinality of B means that B cannot be the empty set. It has to have at least one element. Since the cardinality of B is less than the cardinality of A, B also cannot be the entire set S. It has to be less than that. So B has to have a cardinality that's a number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and A has to have a cardinality that's larger than that, which will be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now let's take notes of the important details of this problem, and let's try to work out more details. So if A and B are independent events, they have to satisfy this formula. We also have 1 is less than or equal to the cardinality of B is less than the cardinality of A. So we figured out some restrictions on the cardinalities of B and A, and this will lead to things about the probability because this is out of six elements. So we know that the probability of B will be a fraction that's going from 1 6 to 5 6, and the probability of A will be a fraction that's going from 2 over 6 to 6 over 6. Furthermore, we know that the probability of A and B will be the product of the probabilities of A and B. So the cardinality of A and B will have to be related by the cardinalities of A and B. So we know that the cardinality of A and B will be 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. So how does this help us solve the problem? We have the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Let's convert this into cardinalities. The probability of A and B is the cardinality of A and B divided by 6. This is equal to the probability of A, which is the cardinality of A divided by 6, multiplied by the probability of B, which is the cardinality of B divided by 6. We can cancel out a 1 over 6 on both sides, so we get the cardinality of A and B is equal to the cardinality of A times the cardinality of B divided by 6. Now we've already figured out that B has a cardinality going from 1 to 5, A is a cardinality going from 2 to 6, and A and B has a cardinality going from 1 to 5. So these are all integer values. So this equation can only be true if the cardinality of A multiplied by the cardinality of B is a multiple of 6, because we need this product divided by 6 to be a whole number from 1 to 5. The problem also specifies 1 is less than or equal to the cardinality of B is less than the cardinality of A. So let's work out case by case for each cardinality of A. Suppose the cardinality of A is equal to 6. How can we get the product with the cardinality of B to be a multiple of 6? Well, since the cardinality of A is 6, we can have the cardinality of B be any of these values, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. What if the cardinality of A was equal to 5? Is there any way we could get the product to be a multiple of 6? No, we can't, because the cardinality of B has to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If we multiply any of these by 5, we don't get a multiple of 6. So we don't get any possibilities in this case. Suppose the cardinality of A is equal to 4, in order that we have a multiple of 6 in the product, we could have the cardinality of B is equal to 3. If the cardinality of A was equal to 3, then the cardinality of B would have to be 2. That's the only case that will give us a multiple of 6. If the cardinality of A was equal to 2, then the cardinality of B, there is no way we can get this to be a multiple of 6 because the only case we could check is the cardinality of B is equal to 1, and this doesn't work. So we have three possible cases that work. Furthermore, when we have the cardinality of A is equal to 4 and the cardinality of B is equal to 3, we can use this formula to get 
that the cardinality of a and b has to be equal to two because that's four times three divided by six. If the cardinality of a is three and the cardinality of b is two, then we have the cardinality of a and b is equal to one. So all that remains is to count the number of sets that satisfy these conditions. So now we have some combinatorics. So let's work out with the first case that the cardinality of a is equal to six and the cardinality of b can be one, two, three, four, or five. So s is six elements and a has to be equal to s. So there's six choose six or just one way that this is possible. Now the cardinality of b is one, two, three, four, or five. So b can be anything but the entire set s or the empty set. So one way is we can count up all possible subsets that are size five, four, three, two, and one. But there's a quicker way we could do this calculation. When you have six elements in a set, the number of subsets is two to the power of six because each element can be in the subset or not. That's two possibilities for each of the six cases. So we have two multiplied by itself, a total of six times. But we have to subtract out that B is not going to be the entire set S or the empty set. So we have to remove two of these cases. So we have two to the power of six minus two, which equals 64 minus two, which equals 62 cases. The number of ordered pairs here will be one multiplied by 62. So this will be equal to 62. So there are 62 ordered pairs A and B that satisfy this condition. So that's one of the cases. Now let's go to the next case. The cardinality of A is equal to four, the cardinality of B is equal to three, and the cardinality of A and B is equal to two. So we have six elements in S. Let's first pick the common elements, which are two. So the number of ordered pairs of A and B that satisfy this, we will first pick two out of six elements. So it'll be the number of ways we can pick two from six. This is equal to six choose two. Now the cardinality of A is equal to four. So we have two more elements to get to the set A. So there are four remaining elements that we haven't picked and we want to pick two of them. This will complete A. So we multiply this by the extra two that we can pick for A, which will be four choose two. Now B has three elements. So we need one more than the common elements of two. So there are two elements we haven't selected yet and we need to pick one of them. So this will be the extra one that we can pick for B, which will be two choose one. So we have six choose two multiplied by four choose two multiplied by two choose one. This will be 15 multiplied by six multiplied by two, which equals 180 ways. So we've worked out this case and we just have one more case to work out. It'll be similar to what we just worked out. So from six elements in S, we need to pick one of them to be common between A and B. So the number of ways of A and B, we will first pick the common element. This will be one from six. So it's the number of ways that we can pick this, which will be six choose one. The cardinality of A is three. So we need to pick two more to complete A. So there are five remaining elements and we need to pick two of them. So the extra two for A can be picked in five choose two ways. The cardinality of B is two, so we need to pick one more than the common elements. So we have three remaining elements of which we wanna pick one. So the number of ways we can pick this extra one for B will be equal to three choose one. So we have six choose one multiplied by five choose two multiplied by three choose one. This is six multiplied by 10 multiplied by three, which equals 180. And we've worked out this case. All that remains is we need to sum up these cases. So we have 180 plus 180 plus 62, and that gives us a grand total of 422 cases. It's quite a challenging problem, and the real mystery is how even 78 of the students could have solved this in the time restrictions. What an amazing question. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.